Hi, it's Julie Stern, and this video is designed to go in a little bit more detail about teaching that transfers, teaching for learning transfer. So let's jump in. Here's perhaps my favorite quote of all the research that I've read. The reason experts remember more is that what novices see as separate pieces of information, experts see as organized sets of ideas. So the question becomes, how do we help our students move towards expertise? How do we help our students see what it is that we're teaching them, all the different activities as organized sets of ideas? And so here's a, a visual that I love to use in thinking about teaching for transfer. So it's from Visible Learning for Literacy was where it was originally um, published. But the idea is that there's surface level learning and students have to acquire an initial amount of surface level learning in order to get to deep and then they can transfer their learning to new situations. The, the aha moment for me in my career was learning this. Surface is not the same thing as rote, strict memorization, or only facts. That surface plays a role, but it's not quite the same thing as strict memorization or only facts or skill drills. Um, that's a part of it, but it's not the only part. And so concepts play a role throughout from surface level learning into deep and then we can transfer our learning. And so I think of service level learning is when students start to explore concepts individually. And then deep learning happens when students start to make connections between concepts. They start to build that sort of organizational structure in their brain. So I have this picture of neurons firing in the brain. That's when we get to deep learning. And it's those that organizational structure that allows students to transfer their learning to new situations. And so here's another visual that my team and I created, sort of similar to what we're saying here, um, that we first have students or acquire their understanding of individual concepts, that surface level learning. And then when they start to organize that information in these structures, that's when we've gotten to deep levels of learning. And I love this visual that my team and I have created of sort of the brain having this organizational structure and that structure is what facilitates learning transfer, what facilitates students' ability to apply their learning to new and novel situations. And so the first step is really to make sure that whatever it is we're teaching has some organizational structure, some organizational ideas. And so I have here a bunch of, of words. I want you to think about what's the pattern. So we think about Nile River to natural features of a place, World War II to international conflict, 50% to proportion. And I'll just pop up the rest of them on here. And I want you to think about what are you noticing about the words on the left to the um, underlined words here? What's the pattern that you're noticing when you look at these? The idea is that the words that are underlined are those organizing ideas. And so sometimes I find that teachers might have to go a little bit more abstract to what they normally think about when they're teaching to make sure that we've got these organizing ideas. Why? Because otherwise transfer becomes really difficult. If we can't think about what we're teaching in terms of these organizing ideas. And so a concept is an organizing idea, according to James Nottingham, I like this definition a lot, containing attributes derived from examples. What I use with my own kids is I say, look, they're simply words we use to organize and categorize our world. Even my very young kids know that concepts are words we use to organize and categorize our world. So typically people think about pattern as a concept, but so is whole number, so is fraction, oral communication, character, and I'd even say background knowledge. That's an organizing idea that we've used to sort of categorize a specific thing um, in terms of literacy or in terms uh, of reading comprehension. Background knowledge is a key, a key feature there. And so this is a visual that I like to use so that students can see the point of concepts. You might feel like learning is this big pile of papers or all the activities that we're doing and just activities that we're just collecting. Um, and what we want to do is help them to see that concepts are like file folders in the brain. They help students to organize information. And so here's an example, a classic example I've, I've seen with teachers all around the world is they'll say, hey, Julie, I'm teaching rocks and minerals. For, for whatever reason, elementary and middle school is a very common topic. I would call this a topic in if we're thinking about igneous rocks, making students sort of classify the types of rocks. And so I always ask myself, what are the connections 
between and among the organizing concepts that will transfer to multiple situations. And I'm looking at the learning outcomes, I'm looking at the standards documents to mine them for those organizing concepts that are gonna transfer to multiple situations. So an example might be, I might often just ask kids, what's the purpose of classifying and investigating rocks and minerals? And that's gonna open up my units to a lot of more exploration than you gotta memorize, this is how we classify igneous rocks. What's the purpose of classifying and investigating rocks and minerals? Or often this particular unit or topic can be about the impact that water and wind have on the earth's surface. How does water and wind impact the earth's surface? And I'm going to study igneous rocks with that question in mind so that students can transfer their learning to multiple situations. And so I have here um, a chart that my, my co-authors and I have created, just some common sort of topics, facts, skills, examples that teachers will say, right now I'm teaching skip counting, right now I'm teaching the seasons. And we just have ideas for concepts. Again, I would look at your standards documents, use those as a foundation for looking for those organizing concepts because every time I look, they're there. Um, we want to find those more abstract organizing concepts in our unit. So you might want to pause the video if you want and sort of think about what are your organizing ideas for your particular unit. Here's some key points that I just want to review before we move to transfer and what transfer is. So concepts organize information enabling easier retrieval. Concepts take on meaning by exploring the attributes of key examples. If we don't have a corresponding concept, it is not surface, which is good. It is rote or superficial, which is bad because students are going to forget. And then finally, connecting concepts in relationship is what makes deeper learning. And so there's some key points that I want to review, but this is why these conceptual relationship questions are so powerful. They facilitate students seeing the connection between and among concepts in our unit of study. So this is what, these are not exhaustive, but they're just some stems that my team and I have brainstormed so we can think about how we facilitate students building that organizational structure. And we can use those abstract conceptual questions in, to frame our unit, to think about what are my specific contexts that I'm going to take students through, and then they're going to come back and answer that question, and then I'm going to take them through another context where they come back and answer that question. And each time that I come back to answer that question, I can layer on more and more concepts so that ultimately students are looking at the relationship between and among two, three, four, five, six concepts because we want to build that organizational structure in their brain. So two quick examples. This is from um, I believe a, a middle year science classroom where the teacher had them um, arrange these different science concepts on index cards and then write some sentences using these words. So the student wrote, we can arrange matter by their properties. Subatomic particles are arranged in matter. What a great example of students building that organizational structure. And now we can look at another situation where those concepts are at play and students are better able to unlock the new situation where those concepts are at play. Here's another one for, I believe, grade seven mathematics, where students are looking at the relationship between story table, linear models, graph, and equation. And the thing that they wrote, if you wanna pause the video and read it, it's amazing. But this is the type of thing that we're looking for, for students to be able to grasp that organizational structure of their discipline. And that's what's gonna allow them to apply their learning to, to more and more situations. And so here's how I used to think about curriculum design. I had my topic, I'd break it down into subtopics, and then I'd teach you know, those subtopics in somewhat of a linear fashion. Here's how I currently think about curriculum design. I've got my question of conceptual relationship, and then I think about different contexts that are going to increase in complexity, increase in sophistication, so that students can get used to applying their learning in new situations. And so here's just some typical types of transfer, just to get your brain going thinking about different types of transfer. So in language arts, typical types of transfer are simply other texts, and it doesn't have to be a whole other novel. But whatever the concepts are that we're studying in this particular novel or this particular thing that we're, we're reading or exploring, I want to find other examples like a poem, things like that, where those concepts are present. 
For science, we want to think about maybe other living things or other ecosystems or other examples of energy. For mathematics, it's often other ways of depicting the concepts or other ways of solving um, whatever it is that we're exploring, solving for whatever it is that we're, we're studying. For social studies, it's often other communities, other cultures, other countries. That's examples of typical types of transfer. It's not exhaustive, but I just want to give those as ways for you to think about how to, how to intentionally teach for transfer. And so I have here um, these different examples from different disciplines so that we can see some more examples. So I might, for social studies, I might think, what's the relationship among resources, opportunity, freedom, and migration. So I want to start with sort of simple transfer or similar transfer and increase the dissimilarity of what I'm transferring. So looking at those particular concepts, I might start with different examples of migration in U.S. history. So transfer from one situation in U.S. history to another situation in U.S. history. That's very similar transfer. Then I'd go to modern examples of migration to the U.S. So that's more dissimilar because it's not in history, it's today. And then maybe I'd look at the situation of the RLC drying up in Central Asia, where all of those concepts have an important role. For language arts, I might look at the concepts of rhyme, repetition, imagery, and wordplay. So I might start with looking at those concepts in different poems, from one poem to another poem. Very simple transfer, very similar transfer. Then I might transfer to songs, fairy tales, and storybooks. Then I might transfer to proverbs, adages, and idioms, each one of those being its own transfer. And then maybe I'll go to political speeches. So this is just an example of how we're thinking about different levels of transfer and intentionally increasing the dissimilarity of transfer. Here's a mathematics one. What is the purpose of proportional relationships on solving multi-step percent problems? So some similar transfer might be simple percent problems, such as tax and tip. And teachers often think about this and often see this in mathematics classrooms. So I want to think about increasingly dissimilar examples. So I might, I intentionally want to think about examples where it's not as easy to set up. It's not as easy to sort of figure out. And maybe then I'd go to weather patterns. And then I want to transfer to something even more dissimilar, such as calculating the speed of dinosaurs. So there's just quick examples that I'm sharing. So you get your juices flowing, get you to start to think about how you might set up your unit that teaches for transfer. Here's a science one. How does light impact how we investigate our world and communicate? So starting with similar transfer, we might have students shine light through different objects. How does light investigate our, how, impact how we investigate our world and communicate? We go to something a little bit more complex, like exploring pinhole cameras, periscopes, microscopes. What's the role of light in those situations um, and how we investigate and how we communicate? And then maybe I'd transfer it to a situation where I have students design a museum experience using light. So just quick examples of how we might teach for transfer. And so lastly, I want to share our online transfer template. So this is a quick little website. If you want to go to it, you can see um, this particular way of thinking about tr teaching in an online setting or teaching in distance learning where it's sort of everything organized onto one particular place and here we have early in the week we want to do like a concept attainment things like that and then midweek we want to pose those abstract conceptual questions and have students explore specific context where they're going to um, answer that question and then towards the end of the week the bolt strategy is like having students link all the concepts that we've been exploring and do that sort of organizational structure. And so you could use this for two weeks. I have some teachers using it for three weeks or even four weeks. Um, so, you know, really tailor it to your situation and how, what's most useful for you. But I did want to, to show you that we have that and these key tools and strategies, digital tools and strategies we have here are templates that are ready for you to use and turn those into a digital format. And so if we teach this way, if we teach our students how to teach for transfer, how to, how to intentionally transfer their learning to new situations. They're going to be better able to um, do it on their own. That's the ultimate goal is for them to be able to see here's a new situation and what concepts are present here and how can I use what I've been learning in class to unlock this new situation. So I hope this is useful for you guys. I hope you'll keep in touch and let us know how um, these ideas are working out for you.